Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm at the Camping and Caravanning Club Blackmore site near Malvern. And the van I've brought today is the Auto Sleeper M Star, recently launched at the February Caravan and Motorhome Show at the NEC. Now, this is Auto Sleeper's biggest and most expensive camper van ever. It's also their first van conversion to be based on the Mercedes Sprinter. Of course, the company already has an extensive range of Peugeot-based van conversions and a number of coach-built models such as the Borton, Winchcombe and Burford on the Mercedes Sprinter chassis. So this is a very logical extension to their range. So I said it's the biggest, but how big? Well, length is the key thing, 7 0.15 meters long, long for a van conversion. Height is 2.9 meters. Again, quite high, but really that's down to the habitation air conditioning on the roof, which is standard. Width is much more modest, just 2.02 meters wide. So this is a van that won't feel daunting on country lanes. However, Another figure that you need to know is the maximum gross weight because that on the production vehicles will be 3,880 kilos. So you will need currently a C1 license to drive it. But because of its size, Auto Sleepers had no option but to go for that heavier chassis. And it does give you a decent payload of 480 kilos. And then price. Well, as I'm filming today, the price has yet to be finalised because there may be a Mercedes increase on the way. However, an estimated figure was given at the show of £115,000. I'll flash up the finalised price on the screen now. So it comes with a flagship spec. Everything you see on this test van is standard equipment. So that starts with the Mercedes Sprinter van with a choice of metallic paint finishes, the new 170 horsepower engine as standard, and also the automatic transmission. So the alloy wheels are standard, and there's a little bit of bling with these chrome door handles to match the chrome bars on the grill. And then this big sliding door has a soft closing mechanism and the electric step not only auto retracts but it has that neat light to illuminate it at night. The big two lay awning, roll out awning is standard as well and that's illuminated too. Then towards the back of course you've got your external barbecue point but the thing you might really notice is the very automotive look with this flush privacy glass, all dark tinted and very, very car-like along the side. But of course, none of it opens. It's all fixed glazing and, well, it is quite dark tinted as well. We'll have a look at that on the inside later on, of course. There's another step at the back, of course, and the reversing camera and a 120 watt solar panel on the roof. Then round on the offside, you've got your fresh water filler. Now both tanks are underslung and heated. The fresh water tank is 70 litres and the waste grey tank is 77 litres. You can quite clearly see the grey tank here where it's quite, uh, quite low, but it doesn't look too vulnerable because the tap itself is tucked up, uh, clipped to the, the skirt of the van here. But it is one of those fiddly old fashioned taps. And then you've got, of course, your toilet servicing hatch. And for once, you've got a spare wheel underslung at the back where it's not too inaccessible. Then there's the underslung LPG gas tank, 30 litres, so no gas compartment or changeable gas cylinders in this van. And before we go inside, I think it's worth saying that this M-Star does seem to have attracted a lot of positive comment 
and a lot of admiring looks on the campsite. Now I could start by opening that huge sliding door and going in that way, but I'm not going to because this van is so much about its rear lounge. The classic UK two berth layout. Now, as you'll already have spotted, these armrest cushions are rather prone to doing a Houdini and making an escape for themselves. But this is your comfortable, luxurious two-person seating area. So let's go in and take a closer look. And this is when, to me, this sort of layout really comes to the fore. It's a nice day, warm enough to have the back doors wide open and you can sit here and enjoy the comfort and it is a very comfortable rear lounge so you're enjoying the comfort of your your camper van or motorhome and and yet you feel almost as if you're sitting outside the whole of this back open and obviously putting a lot of light into the vehicle as well the sofas a little bit of a knee roll um, they're very comfy the leather is standard you don't have to pay extra for it but there will be a cloth option if you don't want leather auto sleepers have obviously gone to town on usbs so if you're a gadget person you'll like this van there's usb sockets over there and there and up here as well and all of them have combined usb a and usb c sockets That'll mean something to people that are more techy than me, I'm sure. And you've also got these nice little reading lights that slide along their rails. Not only that, but you've got mood lighting above the top lockers. So it's a nice environment. But this is a British van, and at least some of your holidays are going to be in Britain with British weather. So what's it like with the doors closed? Well, you've still got a good sized hecky roof light, putting some light into the vehicle from above, but the side windows are quite darkly tinted. So that will be a personal preference. Yes, it makes it very private. You can't, you don't have that sort of goldfish bowl feeling of people looking into the vehicle, but it does make it a bit darker looking out. More important to me is that none of these windows are openable. So you'll be relying on that hecky roof light for a bit of fresh air. Unless it's really, really hot on that one day of the British summer and you've got your Truma habitation air conditioning running, in which case, of course, you will have the doors closed. You might be sitting back here with your feet up while there's plenty of room to do that and these scatter cushions and armrests, you can pad yourself against the back door and sit back and watch the Avtex TV, which is another standard feature and comes with a soundbar. That pops up into the cupboard above, but unfortunately the bracket on this one is a prototype and it doesn't work all that well. It will have a better bracket for easier up and down movement on the production vehicles. What else can I show you? Well, I do like these top lockers. Now the Sprinter, unlike the uh, Fiat's and Peugeot's, narrows quite considerably towards the roof. The shape of the van is much more, well, it's much more tumble home towards the top of the vehicle. So to get away with, away from that feeling of being hemmed in, auto sleepers have cleverly used these concave doors for the top lockers. I really like those. Nice much more modern handles too. They're positive locking, good space inside and it's all boxed in. This sort of concrete style finish for the bottom section of the doors. You've got magazine pockets on the back doors and I do like the way the side walls have been panelled. It's almost got that feeling of a coach built motorhome back here. Another aspect that gives you that coach built feel is the Audi heating with the controls over here. Now, that's a first for any UK camper van or van based motorhome. 
And in all my testing career, I can't think of another van-based vehicle that I've found with Audi heating. And it really does give you a cosier, um, more homely heat than any blown air system. Now in this vehicle, not only have you got radiators throughout the, the motorhome, including the washroom, but you've also got some fans to boost the heat in the front of the vehicle, one in the cab and one at the end of the kitchen unit. You don't have to have those running, but they do ensure that you don't get a cold spot at the front of the vehicle. And you've also got the Audi Flow system, which gives you almost instant hot water. In fact, it gives you longer showers, less waiting for water to heat up. And Audi say it gives you up to three and a half liters of 40 degree hot water every minute. That sounds great for showering to me. Also on the wall with the Audi heating controls is Autosleeper's new control panel, all touch operated. So you've got switches for the lighting, awning lights, and power, it shows your battery conditions, leisure battery and vehicle battery, um, your input from your solar panel and what uh, power you're actually using. Tells you your internal and external temperatures, your water level, fresh and waste, and you can turn on your water heater, uh, your water tank heater there. You've got your water pump control on there as well. And then your gas, um, there's a solenoid. As soon as you start the engine, the gas tank uh, is, like, the undersung gas tank is isolated. So you control it, uh, switch it back on to use any of the gas appliances on here as well. Then there's also plenty of storage under these rear sofas. Both of them have these drop front doors at the front end. And on this side, the off side, that area gives you plenty of room for your bedding. I've got a double duvet, two pillows and so on in there. And then at this end, you've got your Audi heating unit. On the near side, the whole space is empty for storage. I would like to see a door at the end here so that you could load chairs and things in from outside. And I think that is one of the details that's being changed when the M-Star goes into production. Hopefully, anyway, I'd like to see that addition. But really good storage under that near side seat. And you can get to it anyway by just lifting the seat base on gas struts and then loading it from above, as well as the drop front door. When it comes to dining, there are two small island leg tables, both stored in the wardrobe. Now, the tables themselves are quite easy to access because they're at each side of the wardrobe. But the legs, if you've got a wardrobe full of clothes for your summer holiday, well, they won't be so easy to get at because they're at the back of the wardrobe. And then one table goes at the back with the rear lounge, the other is for the cab seats but they're small tables. So if there's two of you having a, a proper sit down meal, well, they're a bit, a bit on the titchy side. What I would like is to be able to use both tables side by side here when, well, when either you've got friends in or when you're having a full sit down dinner with such a comprehensive kitchen, you're not, you're not gonna be having uh, beans on toast, I hope. So there's a lot to like in this lounge, but I can't help feeling that you don't need four scatter cushions and four armrests. With the back doors open to enjoy my lunch and a bit of sunshine, I've already knocked one of the armrests out the back door and I think, oh, yeah, scatter the uh, scatter cushions just joined it. And now I've got a bit more room at the table. Yeah, if it was my van, I'd certainly leave two armrests and two scatter cushions at home. And that would also leave me less cushions to stow away when I make up the bed. So yes, at night, the first thing we need to do is get rid of all these scatter cushions and armrests. Now, in reality, you won't just throw them through the van. 
the scatter cushions might be useful as pillows or cushions for the head of the bed. And these armrest cushions just stow in the center aisle if you're using the double. But it's much more amusing to throw them all out the way. If you want single beds, it's very simple. Just pull off these backrests and you've got instant single beds. 1.86 meters long by 0.66 meters or 666 centimeters wide, which is six foot one by two foot two. So very straightforward. If you want to double, it's not a lot more difficult really. Just pull these slatted bases out from each side so that they meet in the middle. Now, you might not want to sleep on a leather bed. That's not a problem either because the reverse side of each cushion isn't leather. So turn them over. As we said, there's plenty of room for your duvet and pillows to store in that offside under seat locker next to the Audi heating system. And in no time at all, you've got a really big flat double bed. As you see, the two backrest cushions, because they're only thin, they store one on, well, they stow one on each, one on top of each other for the bed. And the bed size, 1.86 meters long by 1.66 meters wide. So that's six foot one long by five foot five and a half wide. You've actually got probably another couple of inches between the end of the mattress and the door, but uh, the measurements we give are always the mattress measurements, not the sometimes rather over optimistic measurements that most home manufacturers use. And then, You've got pleated blinds, or all the reading lights, four reading lights, one in each corner, and curtains, if you want to make it look a bit more homely. So the kitchen, and if you like your British motorhomes, well, you'll love this, because it's got all the kit. Your cooker is, a Fetford unit with a separate grill and oven and a mains hot plate as well as three gas rings and above it you've got a cooker hood with extractor fan. Over on the other side you've got a microwave as well as this really large fridge freezer. 154 litres and it's a compressor model so you just switch it on and forget all about it and you've got a 100 amp hour lithium battery and that solar panel, so you should be okay for a bit of off-grid camping too. Not only that, but it's one of those fancy fridges that opens from either side. And in this layout, that actually works because, well, you might be coming from this end to get another drink while you're having your dinner, or you might be at this end, washing up or whatever, preparing the meal and, it just adds convenience. Another thing that adds convenience is all this space up front. You might have expected Auto Sleeper to build the kitchen part way across the sliding door because that's the normal thing to do in this type of layout. But the Merc is that little bit narrower and I think that would have made it feel very confined. Whereas here, you've got this lovely open space. Now. Top tip, if you've got a dog, don't take it to the auto sleeper showroom because it'll see all this open space and go woof, woof, woofty woof, which in dog means buy that M star now. Right, back to the kitchen and away from dogs. Well, if you're cooking a meal, you have got plenty of worktop. This one just hinges down at this end and on the production ones, the cook, cushion behind will be modified so that it doesn't get in the way. So good worktop 
alongside the hob there. It's got a little support underneath it. And then at this end, this is quite neat because you've got one-handed operation for this super-sized worktop flap here. Doesn't get in the way of the dog either. Sink comes with a removable draining board and this clip-on rack that just attaches to the sink lid. Actually, I found that more useful than the plastic uh, draining board because you just put a few things in there and they drip dry very easy. Good storage above and being an auto sleeper, well, one can't let standards drop, can one? You've got your crystal glasses. Back here, you've got plate and cup racks for your melamine crockery, more storage, and more storage here. Little cupboard under the sink, and bigger, much bigger cupboard below, but wow, very small plastic cutlery tray. Doesn't really seem in keeping with the rest of the van. Why aren't there more drawers in this kitchen would be much better storage. And then you wouldn't be down on your knees to look in cupboards because, well, drawers are just that much easier to get at, aren't they? Another big cupboard above the microwave and across the top of the wardrobe there. So plenty of storage and generally a really well-equipped kitchen with masses of worktop. And on storage, I should mention, of course, the wardrobe itself, which is a really good size. If you've got longer garments, you won't have any problem with hanging them in there. So your partner's dresses will be easily kept nice and smart. Back to the kitchen, and one thing I didn't mention is main sockets. Well, you've just got one up here where you will just about have room for the lead to go over to this worktop for your coffee machine or kettle or whatever. And there is another main socket down on the floor underneath the passenger cab seat. So the washroom, and this is another good feature because you've got a separate wet area. Although it's not all plastic lined, it is a really good shower with that Audi constant flow water heater, plenty of hot water, and well, I think that's one of the best showers I've had in a van-based camper van or motorhome in, well, as long as I can remember. Also, you've got your wash basin in that area. That's quite small. Um, you've got a mirror on the wall and uh, really just a toothbrush mug. No storage in that area and just one outlet in the shower tray, although water did seem to drain away okay. And you've got a roof vent above. Then on this side, well, you've got a window with a blind, but I think you'll probably have the blind shut all the time. The toilet itself is on a tiny plinth, but because it's only a very small plinth, you don't wish you were a basketball ball player when you sit on it. Toilet roll holder, little cupboard above, and that is your only bathroom storage, but you've got a towel rail, and that is neatly above the Audi radiator. And I should just add, because you step up into the toilet area, headroom in here is slightly restricted if you're very tall. It's 1.80 metres. Um, slightly more headroom in the shower itself because you step down again into the shower. Now, before we go for a drive, just a quick look at the cab area because this is a secondary seating area on site. Now, both seats swivel but I can't really ever see you using the driver's seat. For one thing, when the table's up, well, you can't really get in and out. But if your partner's asleep at the back, it is somewhere to sit, or if they're watching telly and you want a quieter area to read. So good to have this swivel passenger seat and good to have a table as well, somewhere for my coffee. And Auto Sleepers is quite proud of the way they've integrated the Merc cab, which isn't always an easy thing to do. You've got the full height walkthrough and then magazine pocket and little storage pockets over the front seats. Just be careful what you put in there that uh, it doesn't come flying out. You could do a little net there to just hold things in. 
Coat hook as well, and somewhere for your awning winding handle to stow as well. Right, time to go for a drive. And being a Merc, that means foot on the brake, press the button to start, and select drive with what looks like it should be the indicator stalk. So driving the M-Star, and you should note that this prototype isn't exactly to the spec that the production vehicles will be. So here we've got the old 2.1 litre, 163 bhp engine. Production models will have the new 2 litre, 170 horsepower engine, which is to a higher emissions standard. In addition to that, the production vehicles will not just have the MBUX display, but the reversing camera, rather than using this separate screen up here, will display through that MBUX unit. Not only that, you won't get just a reversing camera, but you'll get parking sensors all round as part of the Mercedes parking package. It's the smaller display here, the seven inch one, rather than the 10 and a quarter inch one, but it still has that lovely crystal clear quality that we've got used to with these Merck sprinters. What we haven't got used to is that this one is rear wheel drive. More and more, we've got used to sprinters being front wheel drive, even big A classes with front wheel drive. The old USP of the Sprinter always was that it was one of the few vans left that was rear wheel drive. And you can still get rear wheel drive as in this instance. So if you're used to uh, parking on farm sites or anywhere where traction might be an issue, that rear wheel drive will be an advantage. The other thing I really noticed with this van it's just how quiet it is. And the new engines are even more refined. It really is exceptionally quiet. Yeah, there's the odd chatter from things in the back, but even conversion noise is very subdued nearly all the time, unless, unless you're on a really rough bit of road. Handling is good, and you can thank the really long wheelbase for that. And it's a very easy vehicle to drive too, because it's not wide like a, a big A-class motorhome. Although it's long, you only notice that when you come to park it or manoeuvre it. Um, most of the time, you're more aware of the width, which is the same as nearly any other van. But what you get with this van is a smoothness that you don't get on say a Fiat Jakarta or a Peugeot Boxer. It rides really well. It's a comfortable ride without spoiling the handling. So that is where some of your extra spend on this vehicle has gone. Just with the fact that it is more refined, more sophisticated. So, I'm just back from a long walk along the ridges of the Malvern Hills. Park at British Camp. It's only five, ten minutes away, and the views from the top there are absolutely spectacular. Anyway, back to this Auto Sleeper M Star, and time for my final verdict. Well, what don't I like? Not much, really. I'd like some drawers, better cutlery drawer, particularly in the kitchen. I'd like a second armrest on the cab seats because the cab seats are really good, but it seems a bit odd not having that second armrest. The spec is really good. I can't think of what you're missing, really. Well, you're not missing anything. Habitation, air conditioning, solar panel, lithium battery, it's all here. But not so sure about the fact you can't open the windows. 
You need to be able to use both tables in this rear lounge too, but I'm sure that's the sort of detail that auto sleepers will hopefully sort out before the M Star goes into production. The one thing I was reticent about before this test was the price tag, but everybody that's seen it on site hasn't batted an eyelid at 115 grand. Well, that shows how people have accepted the increased prices of motorhomes in 2023. And, well, okay, this is a lot of money, but you do get a lot of van, a lot of spec. It certainly catches the attention of other campers on site. It's very comfortable. Yeah, if you want a really luxurious, really spacious van conversion, and why not? Because that narrower body really is a boon on the road. Well, put the M Star on your shopping list. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And remember that all these videos are brought to you by MMM Magazine, Britain's longest established and best-selling motor magazine, full of travel, accessories advice, buying advice, road tests, and a lot more. You can get it in digital or print. See outandaboutlive.co.uk to get your copy or to subscribe.